No more rankings videos, please. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could finally put those rankings to use? Six of the last seven episodes. Thank you guys for sticking with us all the way through. The rankings are done. Let's put them to use today. Alex and I are going to be doing some mock draft goodness. Let us know in the comments below who you think ends up with the better team. Let's go. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do what you got to do, YouTube world. Uh, for everybody else, follow us on social media at the FF Sackos and go ahead and check out our website, the fantasy football sackos.com for everything you need fantasy football this season. Let's go. Welcome to the fantasy football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shawcross and Alex Krogan. Let's go. How are we doing? Fantasy football sackos. I mean, back again, Jason Shellcross. Happy to see you, handsome. Alex Krogan joining us. Look at that beautiful video quality we got going on. Back again, episode 12. Yeah. And you're going to be mocking. The, the rankings are gone. Finally. It feels good to stop doing that, doesn't it? It's so I, it's just like like fantasy football enthusiasts, especially those listening like now to podcasts on fantasy football, like generally like love some stats. And don't get me wrong, I also love me some stats, but like the just it's just it can be a bit overwhelming. So this is going to be a little bit you know more laid back. We still have all of our stats and whatnot, and we'll talk about the players that we end up drafting today. But uh, yeah, it's not going to be an hour of target share percentages and attempts and targets and blah, and all that. So it's yeah, we got our rankings done for a reason. So now we can enjoy all of our hard work. Let's do it. Yeah, we're uh, episode 12. We're at the end of the first round, uh, just about to venture on to uh, round number two starting uh, next week, which we're looking forward to. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a crazy ride. Uh, we've been doing this for what, two months already. And it's trying amazing. to get through all the rankings is, is something that I've personally never done before. Like, I feel like I usually have a good thought process going in. I feel like I'm usually relatively prepared for my drafts, but actually going through and looking up information and who should I be, you know, who do I like more, this player, or this player, and then actually putting together a top 100. All of this, of course, is at our website at www.thefantasyfootballsackos.com. Cheap plug. So it's it's been a, it's been an interesting ride. And so now it's time to start putting some of what we've prepared into into a little bit of, uh, hey, how does this work when we're drafting? What's our thought process um, as we're drafting? And as Jason kind of alluded to, we are doing a mock draft today. So it probably, like if you're a listener to this instead of a watcher, first of all, thank you. But second of all, it might actually be easier to kind of follow along with what's going on on our YouTube uh, page because uh, Jason has masterfully put together a... Uh, uh, you flatter so me. Yeah, so we're, we're using Sleeper, which if you've not heard of Sleeper, it's a fantasy football website. Some people run their leagues out of it. Uh, me and Jason have used it for... Uh, mock drafting you can invite anybody you want to it it takes like two minutes to to set up a username and password and you can just mock whenever you want 12 team leagues from any position that you want uh highly recommended it's it's a great way to kind of prepare for your for your draft and so big ups to sleeper uh on kind of letting us put together what this is it's going to look pretty cool so we're we're really yeah we're we're really excited about it um and we, we hope that, that you enjoy it. Uh, and we'd love to, you know, if you're listening to this, send us an invite. I'd love to mock with you sometime. Uh, oh, absolutely. It, yeah. Yeah. So, we're, so we're, yeah, we're, we're excited to, to finally start talking about some perhaps more in-depth draft, stra- draft strategy. If you do this, then this sort of thing, instead of just uh, talking theor- theoreticals with you. Yeah. And, uh, about the whole sleeper thing, like were it not for sleeper, we'd be like fighting to get into the same draft lobby as each other on ESPN with a bunch of people. What I will say is, is like this sleeper, this is amazing because you can, if you, I mean, 
I don't know 10 other people besides, you know, the two of us right now that want to sit and do a mock draft because it is July 9th. Um, it's fair. However, if we end up getting like listeners that want to mock with us during the episode, absolutely. Like the, the handles that we have on the sleeper app are our actual handles. Like you can add us as friends if you want. And I, like I do mock drafts all the time anyway. So if you want to invite me to a mock, if I'm not doing anything, I love to mock. So, um, and just, anyways. just one, I say one, one more quick plug for sleeper. Uh, you know, you introduced me to this a couple of years ago yeah. and you know, when, when Nick Chubb was, was basically announced the starter in Cleveland, I was sitting, oh, man. I was sitting at a, at a client down in, in Texas. And I was not? literally, I, I was literally, I think I was in a client meeting. God, I probably shouldn't even say that, but, the uh no you know the client yeah well so the, the client's in the same room as me i see a pop-up i don't remember who the starter was at the time but he he was in the amount announced as being out uh and so i i literally went into all four of my leagues and and if i did not already have them picked up nick chubb sent a text message to everybody that i know who's in different leagues saying hey go pick up nick chubb and then of course yeah. he, he won a lot of people leagues so, so yep. sleeper's really great for for breaking that news first, like as soon as it's on Twitter, you're getting a push notification from them. So I, I cannot speak highly enough about it. Absolutely. All right. Now, before we get into our mocking goodness, we do have honestly quite a bit of news to go through. Um, Deshaun Jackson, evidently whether or not he, some believe that whether or not he stays in Philly is largely, and this is per Adam Schefter, is saying is reporting that the Eagles' decision to keep him is going to come down to whether or not his conduct basically gives them an out of his contract. So if it gives him an out, maybe see you later. Or if you got to pay him anyway, then maybe they'll keep him around. Now, Deshaun did apologize to the uh, Eagles GM, Howie Roseman, and owner Jeffrey Lurie. Uh, they and the principals at the Eagles have said that uh, he needs to be active to promote equality. And I think that that's like the least of what he needs to do to try and make up for those comments. Man, were they disappointing. I We posted, uh, for anybody that follows us on Instagram knows, but we actually posted uh, Julian Edelman's response as a Jewish person person to Deshaun's comments. Um, and it was actually a, a really poignant response. It was very, very classy. I would expect nothing less from Julian Edelman, though. Yeah, I don't really have much to add other than... Uh, no, stupid kind, guy. Kind of crazy. I mean, he just made this really dumb, inexcusable mistake. Like, Yeah, I, I really do find it hard to believe like how people post things on social media thinking it's going to go over well you know yeah, no. like pe people just out themselves all the time and it's just like I, why, alone, why would you post why would you post that like let alone highlights from mein Kampf. You? like yeah. what are you doing all right just what are you doing man Not um great. yeah uh nfl but networks hey, l sean jeffrey thumbs up yeah there for, you for go that guy. yeah yeah uh the NFL Network's Tom Pelissero is reporting that the league is proposing that a 35% uh, of 2020 player salaries be held in escrow until uh, and deferred until conditions are better at a later date. Yeah, the players if, are never. Yeah, the players are never going to agree to that. Uh, like, what are you? What are you doing? Why didn't we talk about this months ago? We've been sitting around dealing with this for months. Why are we bringing it up in July? Dude, I don't know. Although the, the <sighs> only positive thing is that maybe every NFL player can have their own Bobby Bonilla day of getting their money deferred for twenty years. There you that's, go. That's the only Million positive thing here, I can baby. see coming out of that. Yeah. Um. There's also been an agreement between the NFL and NFLPA on travel protocols. Um, Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk thinks that there's going to be a preseason. Evidently, it's still being negotiated. I, I'm not so sure. I, I have no idea. I mean, like, why, why, why go through the risk? Um, we'll yeah, see. It, it, right. I was gonna say it. It kind of sounds like college football might only be might only be playing conference games this year too. 
to cut down on some of the travel. So that's, that's yeah. going to screw up a, a bunch of smaller schools who go to Alabama and get their ass kicked for, for a big payday. So yeah, you want to talk about Big Ten. Yeah, Big Ten has decided 10-game uh, conference schedule only this season. My question is, what do uh, what does Notre Dame and what does BYU do? Uh, I think they're going to have to play each other like 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what else you do. Right? Like, yeah. oh, Notre Dame thought it was so cute by being a big independent that everybody had to just wanted to play Notre Dame. And guess what, Notre Dame? Oh, man. As a Chicago, it kind of hurts because like a lot of Bears fans, I would argue, are like Notre Dame fans. Like I knew a lot of people that were Notre Dame fans. Uh, because South Bend is so close, but like, man, what a time to be a Notre Dame fan. Like, you have no idea whoops. what your school is going to do. Yeah. Whoops. Nope. Um, but back to the, the travel protocols, evidently th- it is proposed that visiting teams travel return and return the same day. And so overnight, no overnights in hotels. Uh, but evidently that was scrapped. They're saying that every member of the traveling team will be required to wear masks and buffets are outlawed. Can't go to no buffets. Share that little ice cream pull lever. You're going to get COVID. Um, (laughs) it's just going to make it, uh, it's going to like those linemen have to be so depressed. (laughs) I, I read a really interesting article. This is, we're really kind of going all over the place here, but I read a really interesting article on ESPN about how, linemen and, and how much they eat to like oh stay at stay at the 300 pounds i i would encourage everybody that's listening to go check that out because they're they're all they all lose well not all of them but a lot of them lose like 60 pounds the year after they're done playing because they're not eating like eight thousand calorie diets so if just go check it out it, it's a it's like a quick 10 minute read or something like that that's awesome um Let's see other COVID. Re- let's just stick to COVID related news real quick. And then Do we have to? The way. Uh, one, there's one last and it actually has generated quite a stir amongst the players and that the NFL banned Jersey swapping as part of its COVID-19 <laughs> protocol. So you don't have to wear the players don't have to wear masks on the sidelines. They get to tackle sweat and bleed and everything spit on each other for 60 minutes during a football game. But you cannot spend the 30 seconds after the game swapping jerseys like what? I, I don't know. Yeah, just just wait till they outlaw the prayer circle after the game. And, and oh my have, God, have Alex, this. you did so sorry. <laughs> That's before they take a knee before. No, 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 I'm saying like a lot of games, oh, like man. after, or a lot of times the teams afterwards, like they do like a prayer around the center of the field. So that'll probably get yeah. canceled too. So they don't let the players be right next to each other. Even the though, jersey. again, to your point, they're literally on top of each other for 60 minutes before that. Like the jersey swap thing, just like. Oh man, it's crazy. Unreal, unreal. But they don't require players and coaches on the sidelines to wear masks. I, whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, like if they wore masks, could they swap jerseys? <laughs> like, <what's> the, <laughs> or it's because of the jerseys theoretically covered in sweat. Or I, but you just tackled him for sixty. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Wash it in my Right. All right. So that's enough COVID news. Let's talk about racially insensitive news. Uh, the ESPN's a- ESPN's Adam Schefter is reporting that Washington is planning to remove all Native American imagery. I would say long overdue. When the when the first inklings inklings of the Redskins having you know. Like, like the, I just remember like the NFL tweeting about like, we stand with minorities and my first response, well, you can listen to it. I think it's recorded in one of the earlier podcasts is like, okay, you say that you're like for minorities and racial equality and whatnot, but like you won't let people kneel and protest. And then too, like you literally have the Washington Redskins as the team name. Like, how can you say that you're for racial equality? If you literally have a derogatory term for an Indian as a team name, so don't don't worry about the double standards thing. It's okay. Hey man, better late than never though to the party. At least they're you know, finally Dan Snyder is coming around who once said, 
I will ne- we will never change the team name and you can write it down in bold and all caps. Never. So five years ago, Dan Snyder said that. I'm uh, I'm very interested to see what they change their team name to. And theoretically, like Washington should want to change their team name uh, yeah. so that they can they can sell more merch. There you go. Um, and then lastly, and maybe most significantly or maybe most insignificantly, because I don't really know if anything's going to happen here. But Raheem Mostert has requested a trade from the San Francisco 49ers. He is not happy with his contract. Yeah, the request is that he wants to get paid as much as Tevin Coleman, uh, which I th- think seems like a reasonable request. I think Te- I think Tevin's making two more million a, a year than he is uh, this upcoming year. So, I mean, he's a 28 year old running back that's been cut by four other teams. You got to make your money while you can. I don't blame the guy. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, so he's currently be- he's currently being paid three million bucks, and that's when they brought him over basically to be a special teams kind of guy. Uh, he is only he's only seeking Tevin Coleman money, which is four and a half million. So uh, may- maybe because it's a modest request, he has a chance. Like a million and a half bucks is like that's life changing. But he should have I mean, asked, already- asked for Jarek Kinnan money. Isn't he making more than Coleman? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I thought he was making like 10 or 12, some obscene number. No, it's not that high, but, but it's, yeah. Anyways, I, I don't think he's going to get traded. I, realistically, I, I don't think he's going to get traded. Like I can't think of anywhere other than Jacksonville that like has a question. Oh, stop it. Well, no, 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 no. Not even that. Don't, like you don't hate on my boy. No, I'm not. It's, it has not, it has nothing to do with, uh, uh, Leonard Fournette this year, it has to do with the fact that he's not going to be back next year. So maybe you trade for Mostert if you want to use him for, you know, a few years, right? Like, yeah, but then, he's, but then he's 29 and we all know running backs don't do anything after 30. That's so the cliff. that's the cliff. Yeah. Just, just draft but, somebody else in the fifth round and they'll be fine. Ex- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, maybe a smidge higher than the fifth, but yeah, same thing. Right. Like, Man, it's amazing what the NFL has done to the running back position over yep. the years. No value. No value. All right. You want to mock? Are we ready? Yeah, I do have one hypothetical for you. I was talking to my coworker earlier, and okay, he uh, he's in a oh. keeper league, and he can keep oh, this two. Is a- yeah, it's just kind of a weird one. So he's he's wondering. So he he traded for Deshaun Watson so that he could pair him Oof. with with DeAndre Hopkins. And obviously okay. Hop, Hopkins got traded. And so I said that if you're if you want to you know keep quarterback and wide receiver together, then why wouldn't you just trade Watson for Kyler Murray? If if that owner is willing to do make that trade. Yeah, I think you do that, right? I don't I don't think it's a question. I mean, my rankings bear that out for anybody that doesn't know all of our rankings for every position are available on our website, the fantasy football sackos.com. Several of them have also been tweeted or made into Instagram posts, or what have you follow us everywhere. Go to the website, check out the ranks. We have top 100 player overall rankings that we will also post very soon. Um, and we're going to talk about draft values in future episodes, but yeah, I mean, I have, I have Kyler Murray uh, drafted or I'm sorry, ranked head and shoulders above Deshaun Watson this season. If that owner is willing to make that trade. Yes, I would make that trade. Not, yeah, I, not close. Yeah, I agree. He was like, are you sure you do that? I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure unless I'm missing something, but I don't, I don't think I am. Well, just think about what that season looks like for the Texans. Like, you have Brandon Cooks, who's one concussion away from potentially never playing football again. And you have Will Fuller, who's absolutely insanely talented. Yet, I don't I think he's played in a full season once yet. So, like, assuming those two guys go down at some point, um, I mean, again, you have to assume health. And we always talk about that. But, like, these guys are perpetually injured. I'm just not sure that you know, behind them, there's a whole lot that makes me excited about that offense. And we all saw what David Johnson looked like last season too. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, I would, I, I would definitely trade for, for Murray if that other owner is willing to trade and 
try to hop on it now. Uh, yeah, like if, let's if, do a weapon side do. by side. Right. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald. Oh, and DeAndre Hopkins. Compared versus, to Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, and what Kenny Stills? Kenny, Kenny Stills and Randall Cobb. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe that you would mention Randall Cobb in the same sentence like as the rest Cobb. of those guys. Man, um, you're you're pandering to our Packer fan listeners in Wisconsin that are dr- dreaming of the Randall Cobb of old. They miss him and Jordy Nelson. <laughs> they miss that team. They're like the oh man, <laughs> Alan Lazard, <laughs> the Lizard King. I he's a he is a thank you for bringing up another Iowa State alumni. That's right, Sorry. Alan Lazard Sorry, set record after record at the Iowa State University. He was fantastic. Him and Hakeem the Dream Butler, also who happens to be on the Arizona Cardinals. All right, and that was nobody cares what Jason says segment of the week. <laughs> That was he. <laughs> Nobody cares about the Iowa State plug. I, hey, not a sponsor. <laughs> Believe me, I sponsored them with the tuition I paid to go to Iowa there State. Let yeah, me tell right. you what, man. Exactly. Oh man. All right, let's not talk about this. Okay. All right. So we're we're, we're going to try to do a mock draft here. Jason's got some some sweet graphics. We're going to throw up on our okay. YouTube okay. Page. Hold on. Here we go. We're going to do transition now. Ooh ah, it's magic. And we have a fancy draft board. Again, shout out to Sleeper. Now, I am currently, I mean, I just signed in. I'm J Shall X. If anybody would like to add me on Sleeper. And Alex is Manger47 on Sleeper, matching his Twitter handle. Sure. Now, you're going to tell me where I'm picking. I'm going to tell you where you're picking. Why don't you tell me where you'd like me to pick first? Yeah, we've not talked about this because I thought it'd be more fun to kind of talk through how do I feel where you kind of shaft me with a pick uh, and what kind of what my thought process is similar for you. Uh, I was going to put you at five. Okay. I hate five. Well, actually, somebody's <laughs> going to fall to me that I'm going to want. So it's going to be okay. Uh, I don't want to put you at the turn because I, but I want you to, because I want you to play the ADP game. So I want to put you at, I want to put you at nine to see who you think is going to get back to you, you know, on the wrap in the, in the even rounds. And for, for uh, sake of what we're doing, we're doing a 12 team uh, mock here. Uh, I'm at nine. Jason's at five. Um, so my first thought when I, get thrown at nine and it kind of depends on, on when you're picking your draft or setting your order. But when I'm at nine, my first thought is I want the best wide receiver that's available because I think that the value's there over the running backs at that point. I hate getting put in the top three or four because it forces me to take one of those running backs and I hate being forced to take a running back early. It's just always been my philosophy to take take wide receiver early and fill out the running backs later because of injury concerns. And I was going to say, literally, unless you're in the top four, like then you have uh, you, you're going to take one of those guys. But yeah, it, for- it forces you to take one of them, which is always super frustrating. So that's that's right. the, always my initial thought is if I'm after the first four, I'm probably going to be taking the best best wide receiver available, depending on who falls. Yeah, unless right, there's something get- like glaring that's like a Zeke falling to nine, which isn't going to happen. No, I mean, I don't think it will, but we'll find out. Let's get this draft going. McCaffrey one, Zeke two, Saquon three, Dalvin at four. That is not what your boy wanted because, okay. So when I'm draft, if, if, if you have to draft Dalvin now, like I would have Dalvin much lower, but Dalvin is fourth in my rankings because I'm assuming he will have a contract and report to camp at the beginning of the season. Um, and so for that reason, I still have him ranked at four. Um, if we, if I consult my top 100 rankings individual, I know that the best player available on my board is going to be 
Michael Thomas. And so I am going to take Michael Thomas here and well, all of his 185 targets, 149 catches, and more than 1,700 yards last season. Hello, Michael Thomas. Yeah, and that's the pick. So Derek Henry went after him, Alvin Kamara, Joe Mixon. Then it comes to me at nine, which basically leaves Josh Jacobs left from a from a running back perspective. Of course, everybody knows that I'm very high on Leonard Fournette, but I'm not going to take him here because I can wait a little bit longer, and there's no point in me there, there's just no point in me wasting a pick on, on Leonard Fournette here. So options being available, Josh Jacobs, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Hopkins, and Julio. All those are are more than fine to, to take. Um, you know, theoretically, uh, on the highest on Tyreek Hill, um, we, we talked about it in our podcast where I, we go back two years ago when he and, and – Mahomes were healthy the whole year, and Tyreek Hill was was the number one wide receiver. I do think he gets back into that stratosphere this year. Um, and so for that reason, I'm going to take Tyreek Hill here. But there's six picks between when I pick again. Um, so I would hope that they go running back so that I can either take another wide receiver on the on the turn. Seven and out if, of the first eight are running backs here. So. Right. And so, so if if... If I take Hill, Devontae Adams is gone, Hopkins is gone, and Julio Jones is gone, then I might turn my attention to quarterback or tight end, depending on what running backs are left. So uh, I'll take Tyreek Hill. There goes Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, DeAndre, Julio, Nick Chubb. So I was hoping that one of those wide receivers was going to make it back. It didn't. That's not a super surprise. So running backs that are available, uh, Kenyon Drake, who um, Jason's a little bit higher on than me. Uh, Austin Eckler is available here. Um, Mike Evans is available. Kenny Galladay is available. Um, I don't know if I want Kenny Galladay here um, because I, I feel like there's such a fall off, off after those first five, six wide receivers. Uh, I guess it's five technically. We have Galladay at six. Um, so then I, I think about, do I go Lamar here, which inherently seems a little bit early, uh, but I don't, I'm not that high on Kenyon Drake. Um, if Jason was picking here, I'm pretty confident that he would be picking Kenyon Drake if, if he was in my spot um, or Josh Jacobs. Um, for, for me, it kind of comes down to, is it a tight end or is it a quarterback? Because I don't think the, the running back value is there. I don't think the wide receiver value is there. So um, I guess I'm yeah. just going to roll. I guess I'm just going to roll with Lamar. Oh, let's see it. All right. Not getting a running back to the third round. Thoughts and prayers to Alex Krogh's team. Um, I'm, cool with, I'm cool with not taking running backs, though, because we've talked about it, that there's a lot of depth in those fourth, fifth rounds. All right, so the player that I am absolutely taking here is Kenyon Drake. He is ninth on my board overall, and I am getting him at the 2-8 spot. So to say right. that I am excited does not put in to... It's not accurate for how I'm feeling. I am elated. I could not be happier to get Mr. Kenyon Drake between Alex's pick and my pick. Uh, Alex drafted Lamar, then went Austin Eckler, uh, Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes went right before me. I don't think I'd take Mahomes in the second. Anyway, I'm going to take Kenyon Drake here if, in the if, second if Drake, round. If, if Drake wasn't there, you'd probably be targeting Kittle would be, would, would have been my guess. Connor or Eckler, but Eckler already went. So it would have been between Connor and Kittle for me. Yeah. Now, oh boy. Uh, we also lost. James Connor is gone. We lost Kittle. Uh, who else did we lose here? We lost Chris Godwin, Galladay, Thielen, Melvin Gordon, and James Connor. So you, you sort of like a lot of people usually start by, you know, taking the opposite of what they draft in the first round. You have a wide receiver in the first, you have a running back in the second to kind of keep those two positions going neck and neck. Uh, 
I, I don't think that you would have considered a wide receiver there regardless. That's just kind of the yeah, way no. that you operate. Yeah, I like to try and get what I think is going to be a RB1 and a wide receiver one out of my first two picks. So generally, if I take one, I'm probably going to take the other in the second round. And who I take in first, if it's a running back or wide receiver, depends on where I'm drafting and who's available. I mean, that's just kind of common sense there. Now, I could wait on this gentleman, and I, I might anyways. Chris Carson is staring me in the face. Uh, I'm going to wait and we'll see if he comes back to me. I'm going to take Chris Carson here. After Carson went cup, Le'Veon Bell and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And it is now Alex's turn. Hmm. So Leonard Fournette is, is looking at me in the third round, which I mean, I love me some Leonard Fournette, and I do think he is a... I don't know I how do, you get past him right here. I do think he, he is a running back one. Uh, other players available from the running back position, Stevin Singletary, David Johnson, Mark Ingram, Gurley, Montgomery, uh, Mostert, who we, we talked about, and can you can you trust what's going to happen there? I don't, I don't know. Um, wide receivers, Amari Cooper, DK Metcalf, A.J. Brown, uh, Allen Robinson who we both like to be very close, if not a, a wide receiver one this year. Uh, and so the question for me is if I avoid running back here, which is Leonard Fournette, I, I don't think I can get past not taking Leonard Fournette here because I, I just think that I, and I'll probably take a wide receiver back. So. The, uh, See you is, later, Mr. Lenny. I saw that Mr. coming. Mr. Arm and Hammer. David Johnson uh, at the wrap uh, was AJ Brown, Devin Singletary, DK Metcalf, Calvin Ridley going at the first pick of the fourth round, coming back to Alex, then Amari Cooper in the fourth round. That's tremendous value, I think, for Amari in the fourth. Uh, David Johnson picked right before Alex, and now Alex, who do you got? Yeah, so I'm looking at wideouts. Juju Smith Schuster sitting there, Alan Robinson sitting there, um, who are the you know, the two that were the highest on uh, f- from the wide receiver position. Uh, tight ends, uh, we talked about it um, last episode, actually, where this is the Mark Andrews or Zach Ertz kind of territory. Um, and, you know, that would round me out. I'd, I'd have, you know, if, if I take Ertz here, that's tight end one, in my opinion. I have wide receiver one. I have a running back one. And I have QB one. That would be pretty tasty. Um, so can I get I feel, away from, is there can a I get coming? Away from, well, yeah, it's, it's, can I get away from, from taking an Allen Robinson type guy where if you're doing half PPR, oh, see, this is, this is tight. Todd Gurley is also sitting there who I enjoy, but I, I prefer putting off running backs as long as possible. Uh, just loading up on a Browns six through 10, 6 through 11. Um, I already have Lamar, so I'm not going to consider a, a quarterback. Um, so I, I think I'm going to I'm going to take Allen Robinson here, even though I have Juju Smith-Schuster higher in the rankings. I know Jason's probably going to take Juju if I don't here. Um, so it ultimately comes down to I don't, I don't think I'm getting any of these guys back. Um, so I, I think I'd rather take a higher end wide receiver one. I think Allen Robinson has a higher four than Juju, even though I have Juju ranked higher than um, than Allen Robinson. So I'll take Allen Robinson and and hopefully roll with a uh, with another wide receiver one. Oh, that hurt! Oh my goodness! For those of you watching, you already saw it. The three picks between Alex and I were T. Y. Hilton. I didn't care about Robert Woods. That kind of cut me deep. And then what I'm really upset about is the fact that I miss out on Zach Ertz. Um, I can take Mark Andrews here and still get what I feel like is a very, very good tight end. However, I got some wide receiver ones staring me in the face and I am having a very hard time getting around that at the moment. Um, um, As far as, 
the wide receivers I like the most that are available right now. I have Juju, who's our consensus wide receiver seven, staring me in the face. And I have DJ Moore, who is our consensus wide receiver 12, staring me in the face. Um, it's going to be hard to get off either one of those two, considering I do have two running backs already secured. I think I really wanted Ertz there and I didn't land him. And if you guys listen, I feel like you have to reach for either a quarterback or not necessarily reach. Like they could just be there at a great value. You have, I feel like you have to take either an above average tight end or an above average quarterback in one of the first five to six rounds, because otherwise you're going to be being average at both of those positions and having like a solid, you know, two uh, running backs and wide receivers. I think you're just going to be an average team. Um, even if you have an excellent bench. So, cause that's uh, at the end of the day, that's what they'll be. Um, DJ Moore. You, you did talk last episode Juju. though about, about, Hey, Mark Andrews, uh, I gun know to my head, gun to my head. I think I would take Andrews over Ertz. And I said, you could just, you could justify it either way. I mean, yeah, Ertz had the targets. Andrews had the efficiency yep. but, and now Hayden Hertz is gone. So does, uh, Andrews get more targets. They ha- maybe they'll throw a little bit more than they did last year because they did not throw like at all. They were also hyper efficient um, in the passing game. You like, also how does, might be able. How does the team with the least amount of passing attempts lead the league in? How does the team with the least amount yeah, of passing attempts have a quarterback that leads the league in touchdowns? Yeah, just hyper efficient. Right, I'm so talking there, myself a- into it. There's eight picks between when you pick and when you pick again. Um, one of those teams I'm taking Mark has- Andrews. And I'm going to play the ADP game. Let's see it. Wow. I'm taking Andrews here. So I have a tight end. There goes Juju and DJ Moore. So I lost the ADP game. Juju's ADP was not reflective. He got drafted ahead of his ADP. Um, the, the ADPs are nice. They're nice and updated too. Uh, Andrew's ADP is up. He actually got drafted where I picked him was later than his ADP is ADP is. However, you know who is looking me in the face now after that reach for Mark Andrews? My. Oh, man. All right. Do I do I take. Do I take. Terry McLaren. No, oh. I got I got Chark above uh, McLaurin. Do 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 do. Uh, that is super low hanging fruit, though. I don't mind that we keep making that baby shark uh, reference. I really don't. I won't do it over you while you're talking this time. You're uh, an angel. See, I feel like I have an above average tight end now. Oh, I could. I really want a real. You could, also look at, you could also look at quarterback here because I know Dak, that's what I'm Dak, between. Right. Dak Prescott sitting there around five. I am between DJ Chark and Dak Prescott. I feel like if I miss on Dak, I wait on a quarterback for a while. Correct. Uh, oh, man, I don't know if I can talk myself into it. There's so many good people left. I'm I'm rolling with Chark. Oh boy. So, uh, you went with DJ, uh, most are went, uh, Russell Wilson followed by Darren Waller. Uh, so from our point of view, there really is no tight end value, uh, left any longer. Uh, I don't have one. So, uh, I disagree. There, there's no value after Darren Waller in the fifth round. I'm not taking a tight end in the fifth round. Okay. I'd wait till the sixth. And I have a guy. You don't need to take him yet. Uh, you got you got several know. rounds, so I'm not I'm not looking at a at, at tight end for sure. Um, when it comes to wide receiver, I already have two of them: and Allen Robinson and Tyreek Hill. So probably defaulting to running back potentially is this where this is where I start loading up a little bit. Um, so the running backs available. Based on ADP that are, that are sitting here is Kareem Hunt, uh, Marlon Mack, Darius Geist, Damian Williams, 
Cam Akers, Ronald Jones, Sony Michelle. Ugh, like not not a whole lot that that I'm looking uh, to get here. Um, honestly, the running back that I like the best out of all of them is definitely Ronald Jones. Um, but his ADP is probably like I'm able to probably kick the can until next round unless, unless uh, you know, Jason steals him. Uh, because there is... I, I love I this. Think, I, think I hate your guy, second running back, and I hate him a lot already, and I don't know who it is, but it doesn't matter because he's your RB2. Yeah, and I'm not really worried about that. Um, no, because you're going to make it up in Lamar. Yeah. Um, so, honestly, I think there's more value here to just stick with the wide receiver. Oh, um, we're taking our flex, ladies and gents, before we have an RB2. Let's see it. Yeah, and I'm comfortable with that because, as we talked about, I'm I'm high on Cortland Sutton. Um, and he's sitting there. And so is it a reach? Maybe, but I also don't really like anybody else here, honestly. So go with I from the ADPs like, that was a reach. I'd rather look at my team and look at players that I like instead of players that I don't like or players that I'm, I have higher upside on. So I'm cool with Allen having Tyreek Hill, Allen Robinson, Cortland Sutton. Um, just go at it. Um, Ronald Jones is, is still there. He's he's my pick coming back. Um, I think Ronald Jones is going to be the number one down in Tampa Bay. Uh, and so anytime you get a number one running back in round six, um, I had him just rank, ranked just outside uh, my RB2s. Uh, so I, uh, I'm, co- I'm comfortable with Ronald Jones. I think it's high upside. All right. And between Alex's pick at, of Ronald Jones went Deshaun Watson, AJ Green, and Marquise Brown. Now, I will say, I feel like the sleeper app, I'm not, I know it's all based on ADPs, but like maybe it's just my, like my personal league that I'm in. I feel like in my, the leagues that I draft in quarterbacks go a lot later, later than they do in sleeper. Well, it's just all based on ADP. So, and like the teams on sleeper can occasionally and will, you'll see draft second quarterbacks before sometimes I'll draft my first. So if I want a decent quarterback in sleeper, I usually have to take him earlier in the app than I will when I am in person. However, if we end up drafting with some listeners and they are astute fantasy football players, like we are, maybe we'll have an accurate depiction of where quarterbacks might go. Also, I will say that ahead of Dak went Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson, which is not the order that we have them in. Um, okay. So Alex took Ronald Jones, then went to Sean Watson, then AJ Green, then Marquise Brown. Oh boy. Um, I have two receivers. I have two running backs. I have my tight end. There is no value at quarterback right now. I can wait on all these guys. So what do we got? Hmm. Oh, he's looking at me, but I already have one. Um, Hmm. I am struggling here. I think because I want to. I want to go running back here because the the running back value really drives off a cliff. Um, in a huge do you, way. Do, are, do you prefer like in your history of playing fantasy football when you have a flex spot? Are you more of a running back guy there, a wide receiver? Or do you not really care? Uh, what I will say is I think that there is more value with a couple guys that are left at running back on my list than are left at wide receiver. And I feel like given the ADP game, I'm more likely to get a wide receiver on the way back than I'm absolutely comfortable with starting at the flex spot. And at this point, because I feel like the drop off is so steep at running back once um, I'll, I mean, I don't care. I'll say it. The three guys at running back that I'm targeting here are Devin Singletary, Jordan Howard, and Darius guys. 
and I have a plethora of receivers that I have ranked higher than than those guys. However, there are so many that are still available that I think I'm okay rolling the dice and taking one of these running backs now and rolling the dice and seeing if uh, one of those receivers gets back to me. You know what I mean? Because that's shallower. I do. And I just have to decide between Singletary, Howard, and Geis. Let's see. Geis is on an awful offense, splitting time with a really old running back. So I'm going to probably <laughs> pass on him. Singletary. Oh, baby. that Those first six weeks. Like, it just depends if I hope if like I just I'm concerned about how much uh, red zone carries and goal line carries Zach Moss takes away. But I think I am going to roll. Is this Singletary still there or am I making that no, up I, actually? Yeah, I, th- I think you're making that up. He, uh, I am. He's he gone. A while ago. Okay, never mind. I would have taken Singletary there, but he is gone. Uh, he just went so fast. I missed it. And so then I'm going to take. Jordan Howard, because I think he has a legitimate chance to be a running back to you this season, being the starter in that offense, which should be better this season. And several of my receivers went. Let's show who's left. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm bummed out there because I did not take Evan Ingram last round because I was hoping. Told you so. Might. Because he might make it back. I understand that that's, that's probably going to happen. So at this point, I'll probably just be waiting on a, on a tight end. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six teams have a tight end. Um, we're around seven. That's probably about normal. Um, so at this point, I'll probably just sit that, that portion out. Okay. Uh, since, since you brought him up, um, we put out a uh, a nice little informational nugget on Evan Ingram in on Reddit today. It completely blew off, took up or took off, blew up and has almost 600 up or upvotes and almost 70 comments right now as of this filming anyway. Uh, and the, the tweet reads Evan Ingram averaged eight and a half targets per game when healthy last season, tying Travis Kelsey for second behind Zach Ertz at nine targets a game. So half a target a game for a guy that you can get in the, well, eight, current ADP on sleeper is going in the seventh round. And uh, when injured, his backup, Caden Smith, averaged seven targets a game. So again, hugely valued position. And I understand that. Um, I understand that his uh, offense health. changed yeah, and, and his offensive coordinator issue. changed. But let me tell you about, and it's Jason, uh, Jason Garrett is the new offensive coordinator coordinator for the giants this season. But let me tell you what Jason Garrett does for the tight end position. The corpse of Jason Witten had 83 targets last season. Okay. Like, that's that's nothing to sneeze at. First off, he finished as tight end 12 and half PPR. And then listen to these outrageous stats. Um, while Jason Garrett was Dallas's offensive coordinator from 2007 to 2010, Witten averaged 128 and a half targets a season and 91 and a quarter receptions per season, which would have been good for th- uh, third in tight end targets in this past season, 2019, and second in tight end receptions. So I don't really see a drop off coming for the Giants tight ends under the Jason Garrett offense. So. Like as long as Evan Ingram can stay healthy, he's going to have a healthy target share. And even when he isn't, I feel like Caden Smith is probably a viable pickup. And I understand that, you know, they, a lot of their weapons got hurt. Totally get that. However, like you can make that argument for a couple of the top tight ends from last season, like Tyree kill got hurt and missed time. And Travis Kelsey averaged more points per game when Tyree kill was out than he did when Tyreek was playing Zach Ertz, We've, talked about over and over the the injuries that the the Philadelphia Eagles suffered at the wide receiver position and his points per game average went up immensely after Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey were out and also Aguilar compared to when they were playing so like 
you can make that argument for Ingram and in that the Giants didn't have receivers playing, but you can make it for a lot of guys. So yeah. I feel like you should have taken him there. I, I, it's interesting though, that like people are still valuing Ingram in the seventh. Like I, this is a little surprising just because of all of the injuries that he did, did have. Oh boy. What to do here. Um, I am not sure what I would like to do. If I'm being completely honest, I think. Let's do. You know, Julian Edelman is staring at me. He's my wide receiver 21 on the season. So I have him as a low end wide receiver or excuse me. I have him as a, yeah, he's our consensus wide receiver 21. He's my 53rd ranked overall player. And I could use a third wide receiver. I have three running backs. There's no quarterback value. I am going to take Edelman. After Edelman went Michael Gallup, Marlon Mack and Tyler Boyd. Yeah, and honestly, I was probably going to take Edelman if he fell to me there, um, even though I already have three wide receivers just because I think the value is too high to pass. Um, so at this point, I have the tight end, or I do not have the tight end, so I'll, I'll probably just wait. I have a quarterback. I have three wide receivers, and this is generally, generally when I just start throwing darts at running backs. That's just always been my style, where I try to hit on an RB2 um, that's sitting there. Um, so Sony Michelle sitting there, Conan, uh, Karrion Johnson sitting there, uh, Breed is sitting there. James White um, is also sitting there. Um, who and I, I like I like all those guys quite a bit. Um, for me, um, I'm this is a reach and and I'm cool with it. Actually, I'm going to wait and take Alexander Madison on the next go round, um, just because if we don't know what's happening with with Dalvin. Um, ADP dictates that he'll he'll be there next round, so I'll probably just wait on taking him. Um, so I I don't know what running back to take here. I hate Sony Michelle so much. I, I hate him so much, and I don't think don't think I can pull the trigger on him. Um, man. Jason, any advice? Uh, who I would take here? Yeah. Um, I don't really care for many of these receivers. I like Crowder to have a good season. I think Ruggs is going to be in every play right. receiver. Um, I'd rather take the upside of Will Fuller though and hope he stays healthy. But again, I don't need a I don't need a fourth fourth wide receiver. Um, but the value J.K. Dobbins might too. be a good choice for Baltimore. I like Tevin Coleman still. Kerryon Johnson, DeAndre Swift. I like the Deion. Like taking a chance on either one of these flyer rookie running backs, Cam Akers and DeAndre Swift or J.K. Dobbins, I think is probably a good swing here. Whoever you feel like might have a better chance to take the starting role in those three respective offenses. I feel like it's not not a bad way to go. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't disagree with you, um, but I'm going to go with players that I, I like drafting people I know and what to expect from them. Um, Cam, Cam Newton's thrown a lot to running backs in his career, uh, and that's James White's specialty. He's, his, he's been a top 10 running back before, um, and I don't know like if Christian McCaffrey can, can do it with Cam. I'm not saying James White is Christian McCaffrey, um, but I'm I'm just going to roll with James White there only because I know I think he has a higher upside than a lot a lot of those other running backs that I just I don't know what to expect. I know what I can expect out of James White in that offense. Yeah, I mean um, that makes sense. You have James James White is our consensus running back thirty, and you are significantly higher on him than you are like guys like DeAndre Swift and Cam Akers. I am higher on Swift and Akers than I am on James White. So I yep. would have taken one of them. You did not. Who do you take here? Yeah, coming back, um, I, I'm going to Tevin Coleman sitting there. Um, I hated watching Tevin Coleman play last year. Um, I didn't think he was the best running back. I 
don't trust the 49ers offense. So I'm from like, I don't know who to start. Um, so honestly, I'm, I'm going to take Alexander Madison there and hope Dalvin Cook doesn't show up. Okay. Um, hmm. My running backs are gone. And so let's look at receiver. C. Lamb, Jerry, Judy, John Brown, Sterling Shepard. Hello. Sterling Shepard, extremely undervalued, is a flex guy, surefire when healthy, if not better. Like, hello, Sterling Shepard. Like, you're a wide receiver one in that offense. You're a starting wide receiver. We're in the ninth round. You know what else? Like, I just I just scrolled past him. I just saw him. And I, there's like, I don't want any of these running backs. I don't like maybe Keyshawn Vaughn. I might want, and I only have three. So I should, if I should take Keyshawn Vaughn, but you know what? I don't want to because I just feel like, I feel like Ronald Jones could take that, um, starting gig and he will. Yeah, and so I'm, I'd rather take another wide receiver one. Hello, Alshon Jeffrey in the ninth round. Like, he's the starting receiver. Yep. Um, that's, also, that's I've great. completely missed on all quarterbacks because of sleeper ADP values. Like, teams are drafting two quarterbacks in a row. That shouldn't be, but it is what it yep. is. Yep, and I'm, I'm going to hold off on taking a tight end. Um, I'm going to take Tariq Cohen, again, a pass machine. Um, I, I think he has a bounce back here in that offense. And so I'm banking on at least I'm looking to try to fill my running back two slot by taking as many shots as I possibly can um, at a running back. Um, next pick is going to be a wide receiver for me. Um, Jamison Crowder sitting there. Uh, he is the, uh, in my mind, the undisputed number one for, uh, for the Jets. Um, He's going to have 120 yeah. targets. He should not be there. McCole Hardman should not be drafted ahead of Jamison or uh, ahead of Crowder. Like that's no, he should be. Right. So I'm, I'm more than comfortable with, Hey, we'll figure out the tight end spot. There's still plenty of guys there. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't take Higby if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I thought he was going to keep falling. Um, oh, okay. That's, that, that's a big reason. I mean, Noah Font is still there. Hayden Hurst is still there, who I think we have at six. Uh, so I'm cool with cool with any of those guys. Yeah, and if hopefully you want to talk about no offense upcoming season, he had the same uh, or a very comparable season, rookie season to George Kittle. And his new offensive coordinator um, is the same offensive coordinator for that the Jets or the Giants had last season. And we talked, we just talked about how Evan Ingram had all those targets. So yep. no offense could have a fantastic season Noah Noah fantabulous I really need to take a running back and I really need to take a quarterback um interesting I like Naheem Hines a lot they're talking about him catching 100 balls uh that's like the only name sticking out to me Carlos Hyde is a bum not a bum but like not not good for fantasy football um, I'm not going to care if I miss Daryl Henderson, Antonio Gibson, maybe like, I mean, maybe I'm going Heinz. Give me those baked in catches. Give me that high floor. You know who likes to check down to running backs? Phil rivers. There goes Noah Fant. There goes Jared cook. There goes Austin Hooper. Yikes. Alex. Probably going to have to take a side on this round. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be rough. Uh, yep. Keep on falling, girls, boys and girls. And I'm going to take a quarterback finally, I think, in the 11th round. I'm staring at Big Ben, Cam, Tana Thrill, Joe Burrow. Uh, do I want the sure thing in Tana Thrill or do I want the ceiling in Big Ben? I'm going to go with the ceiling. All right. Uh, tight end. Uh Yikes! Let's show hey, this. Hey, <laughs> I'm yeah, not, I got these tight ends up on the screen. Oh, I mean, you hey, got you got Goddard and Gasicki and Hawkinson. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, Hayden Hurst got taken. Now I'm screwed. Uh, so I'm literally just going to wait until round 13 and see who's left. Oh, beauteous. Yeah. I mean, Hey, it is what it is. Um, things, things happen. Um, to kind of lick my wounds here, um, again, more running back shots. Uh, I'm going to take Duke Johnson. I love Duke Johnson. Always have. He's another receiving threat out of the backfield. If, uh, if, if David Johnson doesn't stay healthy, um, Duke is, is overly good. Uh, tight ends are just so disgusting. Um, you're passing on the lot. Yeah. I'm going to take Mike Kosicki here just to lock one in. Um, just cause if, okay. if he went, I don't think he would have made it back to you. No. Right. Then I'd be in big trouble if, if I didn't, if I didn't have it. All right. Uh, Ooh, Deshaun could be sneaky here. He had 30 points in the first game and then didn't play like the rest of the season. So I have all of my positions locked down, which means I have two depth picks between now and kicker and defensive picks. You know who I think might be really good? Oh, I, I, there's two quarterbacks. I really, and I don't always advocate. Well, I usually don't like if anybody that knows me knows that I am very strict on like, if you start, if you are not in a two quarterback league, like you don't have to start two quarterbacks, then don't draft two quarterbacks because your second quarterback invariably just clogs your roster. However, yep. there are certain circumstances, unless you find two quarterbacks that like combined have a really cush schedule. Now, big Ben already has the second easiest uh, schedule this season um, in terms of strength of schedule. I'm not sure what the, uh, defense against quarterback uh, ranking is, but I know he has the second easiest strength of schedule ranking. So I'm kind of comfortable already. However, that makes me want to take a long shot dart throw on who I think could end up being a QB one this season. And that's Joe Burrow. He might be my sleeper this year. Yeah, no, no thanks on ever having two quarterbacks unless you happenstance luck into them by picking them up during the year. I, I'm not going to waste dra draft capital on on two quarterbacks generally. The players that went between my picks are that are non quarterback tight end are Sammy Watkins, Nikhil Harry, Deshaun Jackson, and Antonio Gibson. Again, Deshaun was probably the only person I could have gotten there or was interested out of those people that were drafted. So I might've considered Deshaun. I, you know what I could have done? I could have taken Deshaun there and took in burrow in the 13th. Yep. Uh, probably what I should have done. However, it's not what I did. And so here I am. I will take Rashad Penny to back up my Chris Carson pick. Okay. Uh, Rob, Robbie Anderson sitting there. Uh, it's the 13th round. Um, He's got all the talent in the world. We don't know what that offense is going to look like. Um, he was the Panthers' big free agent signing. Um, and so we don't actually know if he's going to be their wide receiver one or if DJ Moore is. I know that kind of sounds a little weird because we, we're so high on DJ Moore. Um, I already have my my three or four wide receivers, including Jamison Crowder, in that mix. Uh, Robbie Anderson's upside has always been super high. He went off a couple years ago, so um, that would be the guy I'm going to roll with. And then the last two rounds are just kicker and defense and nobody cares. This sounds weird. I generally always go kicker first before I go defense. And the reason for that is because you like, I try to get a kicker on the highest scoring team. I'm a little disappointed that, that Tucker and, and Butker are gone. Um, I'm a big Butker guy. Um, if I can get him every year, I, I try to. Um, so kickers don't really matter. Um, Defenses don't really matter unless you have like the top two or three. So, um, yeah, yeah, I had, uh, I actually had Butker the year that I won our league championship Yep. and I'm going to take Zane Gonzalez here because the guy was insane last year. So what's up, Zane? Welcome to the squad. I still a little disappointed. We didn't do a kicker in defense. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would listen to it. There'd be zero downloads. <laughs> Uh, go in depth, make up some, make up some like random analytics for kicker and defense. Right. Oh, yeah. you got the Broncos. Yeah. I got the chargers. Ha. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Let's do a quick team recap. 
Uh, I have Michael Thomas, Kenyon Drake, Chris Carson, Mark Andrews, DJ Chark, do 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 do, uh, Jordan Howard. I like these these flex options with Jordan Howard, Julian Edelman, Sterling Shepard, Alshon. Like a, a solid, what I think could be a, a so, at least a solid flex, if not a, like could potentially be a low end RB two in Jordan Howard. Um, and then three starting wide receivers for flex options, completely nasty. And then big Ben, if that offense comes back, like we've been talking about all season at quarterback kicker defense, nobody really cares. I mean, not that anybody should, but like, we're not going to talk about him. Uh, yep. I, I'm going to match up my three wideouts against anybody with Tyree kill Allen Robinson and Cortland Sutton. Uh, the upside on, on all of them is, is very solid wide receiver ones in, in my mind. Um, yeah. And unfortunately when you do that, you're going to lose a little bit on running back, especially when you're taking Lamar in the second round, um, who again, if he stays healthy and duplicates what he did, that can be a, a complete game changer. I'd rather take him than, you know, other people that were available in the spots. And then again, my philosophy on running backs is figure out the people that are going to get the targets. So, Ronald Jones has a potential upside with Tom Brady. Um, we don't know what that offense is going to look like. If he's going to be a touchdown machine, then then that's fantastic as an RB2. But if he's not an RB2, I'm going to take a shot with James White, Alexander Madison, uh, Tariq Cohen, Duke Johnson, just because those receptions are hopefully there. And hopefully if I have to spot start one of them, they'll convert one of the catches in, into a touchdown on a screen pass. Um, or if, if one of the lead backs in those offenses get hurt, and they take over. I'm, I'm cool with that too. So um, that's that's kind of my philosophy: is just dart throw, dart throw, dart throw. Um, I have my three wideouts. I'm not going to need to pick up another wide receiver the rest of the year, even whatnot bye weeks. Um, I'll be able to always have two of those wideouts um, going at least at the same time. Uh, so I'm comfortable there. And then the rest is just trying to find another running back. Yep. All right. So a couple things here as we wrap up, um, I think we're going to post the draft and ask our listeners to tell us, we'll, we'll post our teams. We'll ask our listeners to tell us who they think drafted the better team. So please look for that on social media. Let us know who you think, uh, who's going to be the stud out of us too. And who's the Sacco. I think Alex is the Sacco personally, but I might be biased. Um, and then we also want to start doing a couple of little different new things. And we also want your input, um, as we transition away from the draft board. Hi, welcome back, ladies and gents. So there's a couple things. Um, obviously it's off season right now, but we're gearing up to do this, uh, during the regular season as well. What we want is listener input or YouTube watcher input on, um, what kind of podcasts you're interested in listening to. Is it just like, do you just want, I, I like, there's so many different options, like weekend previews. Do you want weekend reviews? Do you want our top waiver, um, advice as a podcast or you just want it like written? Um, we're really at this point, like nothing's monetized. This is kind of just like our free time hobby. And so like, we only have so much time to dedicate to the podcast. Um, we, so we're, we'd like to probably stick to two podcasts a week for now, unless this grows and becomes something huge that we could potentially evaluate doing more or, uh, huge. you know, huge, um, that we could evaluate doing more than that, you know, that'll happen at that time. But for now, during the regular season, we just want to know what our listeners are actually interested in listening to in terms of podcasts. Um, we also would really like to do another mailbag episode. It was Honestly, it was really enjoyable for the both of us. And we had a lot of listeners that are not as um, deep into fantasy football statistics and those things who I also think really enjoyed it. So that doesn't mean don't ask fantasy football questions like give us your fantasy football questions. We already got a couple trickling in. Um, you can tag us anywhere on all of our social media. We'll see it. You can comment on this video down below. Please do. Um, hit the like bell and subscribe while you're doing it, please. Uh, the like button, hit the bell and subscribe. And then what else? Oh, um, 
if you guys like, if you want, we gave some stats out on Evan Ingram today. If you want statistics on like an individual person or player, and we think that there's something there, we'll shout it out. So if you have a player that you want statistics or info on, just drop that down below too. And we'll see if we can't give you like a statistic of the week or st- statistic of the podcast kind of a, a, a thing. You see if we got any nuggets of info for you. Uh, Alex, am I forgetting anything? No, I don't think so. Uh, we also talked about, you know, potentially posting show notes uh, on the website just so, you know, more of a written down tangible thing that potentially you could bring to your draft. If you're, if you're looking at the first couple of rounds and you can kind of have our notes available. Um, so that, that's an option. And the, the thing is like, we just want to do what people want to listen to. We're, we're pretty flexible. Yeah. We like just, we like just talking to each other. Uh, right. Just not even about fantasy football. And for me, that's, that's why I like something like a Sunday night review of Sunday would be super appealing because it would be super light and we'd be goofing around a lot. We can talk about what happened during the day. So it's ready for people to go Monday morning when they head back to work, or we could wait until Monday, talk about injuries, talk about who we project as, as waiver pickups. Um, and How just kind of, just kind of ditch the Monday night thing. But with Thursday games starting again, it's like, do people want to listen to us on Friday or Thursday? So, so in, input's appreciated. We're, we're going to have rankings on the website on, on a weekly basis is what we're planning on uh, to kind of have people go there. But let's be honest. I mean, when you're looking at your teams on Yahoo or ESPN or whatever, you're basing it off of their projections, probably more than you're listening to us. I mean, let's just be honest. You're, you're you probably <laughs> are. So you know, it's it's ultimately your gut call. So we we just want to talk about what people want to listen to and uh, kind of keep things light and, and goofy and kind of be ourselves. And we, we hope that comes through. And I I think it is. Uh, so we we just appreciate everybody watching, listening, commenting, giving us crap when we screw something up. And um, yeah, it's 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 been fun. All right, and. Uh... I don't think I have a whole lot else to add other than visit the website. Um, of course, again, going to plug the social media. We are at the FF Sackos on all platforms, including TikTok as well, even though it's not advertised on our YouTube page. Um, Wake right up in now, the morning feeling like he did. Oh, that, not that TikTok? I had to say, so I had to get one Oh, in. my God. So our, I will also say this. Our most like TikTok right now is of Alex Krogh comparing Leonard Fournette to a freaking bag of what was it? It was uh, it was Arm and Hammer baking soda. You're damn of right. Baking soda is our most like TikTok. It's not even fantasy football analysis. It's a bag of baking soda. Yeah. Good I'm, night. I'm, I'm entertaining people. People can't help but be gravitated to. All right, don't hit your head and on my, the door on the way out. Giant and my giant bags of baking soda. We're not... Okay. Good night. (laughs)